if you're new to town, you might have noticed the tater tot's ubiquitous presence in nearly all establishments with a deep fryer. You can get them specialty seasoned and served up with a variety of creative dipping sauces or as tachos. That's tater tot nachos for the uninitiated. We take our crunchy potato nuggets pretty seriously out here. And did you know a big reason for that is because Oregon invented the tater tot? Our lead producer, John Natariani, and I have been excited to share that little known fact with the world. So today on CityCast Portland, we're talking with food writer and OPB super abundant newsletter producer, Heather Arndt Anderson, about Oregon starchy history, as well as picking a few spots that excel in our state's chosen potato snack. It's Monday, July 31st. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. Is there like a chicken outside or a rooster? Oh, yeah. My chicken's laid an egg. Here, let me close my windows. <laughs> I can't hear him because it's my... so distinct. <laughs> I can totally hear it. The sound of a dinosaur screaming. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Here, let me close my other window. Hold on. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's like, I laid an egg. Everyone must know. Yes, it sounds like they're being strangled. <sighs> All right. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You know, I had no idea uh, until recently that tater tots were invented in Oregon. It was a conversation, I believe, I don't know, it was like a random conversation we were having, you know, different episode, different guests, and someone just dropped that. They're like, oh, and you know, Oregon invented tater tots. And I I was like, what? Like, I wanted to completely <laughs> just change the entire conversation so we could just talk about that. So you being on to, to satiate that curiosity is very exciting for me. So how did that happen? Like, how did, oh. how did Oregon invent the teeter tot? It's funny because, you know, Oregon does not produce the most potatoes, but a lot of the big corporate potato folks are based in Eastern Oregon or started in Eastern Oregon including Orida, which um, people might not realize the name Orida is Oregon, Idaho, um, because it's right there on the border. Uh, So these the folks behind Orida, the um, the Griff family, um, they were producing frozen corn niblets and frozen potato products, and they could offload the waste to cattle farmers in the area. But the scraps of potatoes were technically still edible because it was just like the peels and, and little bits. And so they wanted to figure out a way to recapture some of that cost um, rather than just throwing it out. So they started doing some work, chopping them up and extruding them into these like logs and then uh, finally figured out a way to make them so that they wouldn't stick together in the the freezer bag. And luckily they were already producing some of their like hash brown products. So I think the market was ready. And when they finally released tater tots into markets in the mid fifties, they were like just perfectly situated to be a hit. So, yeah, so it's not like they were, you know, reinventing a wheel. Like they were just like, we already do this. Let's just make it into this shape. Yeah. So, you know, they were kind of already in the the zeitgeist of weirdly shaped potatoes. <laughs> so the one addition is that tater tots, and I didn't know this, actually have peel in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's all, the scraps are all in there. I don't know. <gasps> you know, I can't think of any time I've eaten a tater tot and noticed the peel. Yeah, exactly. They might still be peeled and then the other scraps are used for the tots. I've never been behind the wizard's curtain at Orida, so I don't exactly know how the tots are made. Well, what what do you think it is about tater tots that make them such an iconic Portland snack? Like, I honestly don't see them on the menu as much in other cities as they are in Portland. I think that we have a really strong and storied culture of drinking alcohol. <laughs> so I think that foods that go well with beer and with booze tend to be more popular here. Um, and foods that were calorie dense and could give energy to people who had very labor intensive jobs, you know, steel workers and lumberjacks and folks who need to eat a ton of carbohydrates, um, you know, the tater tots right there, it's ready to go. And the convenience factor too. But um, I think that, yeah, we're a, a region of carb lovers. I just love that. Yeah. You know, pretty much when I found out that Oregon invented the tater tot, uh, I also discovered that Oregon was such a huge 
producer of, of potatoes. I didn't know. I thought that was just Idaho. No, you know, Idaho has us beat by like uh, 10 million pounds or something. Oh, only, only 10 million. Okay. But, you know, yeah. So I think we produce like 3 million or 3 billion pounds and they produce 13 million or billion. So <laughs> it's a huge discrepancy. It's I'm a sorry. Huge difference. It's like, ah, I think it's we should lot. probably narrow that down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh here we go. John just wrote, more than 2.7 billion pounds of potatoes are grown annually in Oregon. Yeah, billions. Which, to be honest, if we put money on it, if we were just like, all right, let's bet, I would have definitely gone with million. But yet, and this is what I find interesting, is that this year the Oregon legislature declared the potato to be our official state vegetable. Why are we trying to take the crown from the rightful owner of Idaho? Is this because they tried to take Eastern Oregon, you think? Maybe. That seems like a really bold counter maneuver on the part of Oregon. Yeah, I don't know. You know, we could have gone with like a sweet onion. That that would have been a really good idea. Yeah. But um, I can't think of any other vegetables that we... Oh, well, we're one of the top green bean producers, too. We're also really pushing radic radicchio. Yes, the Culinary Breeding Network folks are really like drive... And it's a really good looking... I mean, it's a sexy vegetable compared to yeah, a potato. Right? You I can't... <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, right now we, we have a running kind of emoji joke where if anyone says, I'm going to lunch, John just puts a potato as an acknowledgement of, yes, you are going to lunch. And and it just because it's that's just AFK. It's so silly looking. It's just like, Bleh. you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm a little disappointed in our state. I just wanted to say and I want to share that sentiment with you. Um, I don't know why we chose the potato. No diss to a potato, but Idaho. I mean, Idaho potato, Oregon potato. I don't know. But no, it's not. It's it's not as well known. But potatoes do bring a lot of money to the state. They are one of our top agricultural products. So mm -hmm. it, I mean, it makes sense. All of those like official state whatevers are all kind of pushed by marketing boards, anyways. They're not always for any real significant reason. Hazelnuts too, like they're our state nut, but you know, they weren't even really a thing until the 80s. That was when like the hazelnut board was like, we should make hazelnut a state nut. So it's just these marketing people, really the publicists are out there getting vegetables, the fame that they demand. <laughs> just imagining just the paparazzi after a potato. <laughs> Another thing that uh, we discovered, another like potato claim to fame is that we we invented the potato gun. Oregon did. Yeah. So the uh, it's the water potato knife. Um, it's a knife gun or something. It sounds very deadly. I can't remember what the exact patent says. But yeah, Lamb Weston, which is sort of the Orida um, competitor, also in eastern Oregon, um, invented this like hydraulic gun that's a grid of knives that um, the water blasts the potato through it to like rapidly cut French fries. And that same company, Lamb Weston, invented the curly fry. So the curly fry what? is also born in Oregon. Yes. <gasps> Can you believe it? And we also invented the JoJo. So we have like the holy trinity of potato products Heather, are all from Oregon. Stop. You need to stop. <laughs> I can't. Okay. So I thought this was all gonna, just going to be about teeter tots. You <laughs> just threw in curly fries and JoJo's. Yeah. Okay. I do believe we do. I believe now. Okay. Potato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's our state vegetable. But it's more like... Could the tater tot be our vegetable? I think it should be. I would make a strong case for that. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a quick break here. And when we return, three places that make the best tots in town. What are the three places do you think excel at making tater tots here in Portland? I'm going to start with a low-hanging fruit and for the generic you just need some starch to go with your beer doesn't need to be fancy um it's a toss-up between fire on the mountain and mcminimums they have oh yeah extremely serviceable tots mcminimums you can get the cajun spice on there um they're great it's a very very good standard like gold standard i would say for a tater tot if you want to start getting weird on a tater tot um, Bottle Rocket has this fish sauce tot, which tastes kind of like it's just a potato version of the, like the pock pock wings. Ooh, They're like sticky and sweet and salty and a little funky. Um, I think that Hungry Tiger's tachos are better than the tachos at 
oak spot on public house where the tacho was invented. Oh, wait, oh, hold up. You, Heather, you keep dropping these like nuggets. I keep nuggets. burying the lead. <laughs> I know. You're just like, and eh, whatever. And also, mm, we invented tachos. Um, back it up. <laughs> <laughs> Who in Portland invented the tacho? Yeah, his last name was Parker, I think. He, um, it was the oak spot on public house over in the Selwood neighborhood. Do you know what year? Um, it was in 2003, I want to say. It's so recent. Mm-hmm. Jim Parker. Jim Parker. Jim Parker. That's the the name we were just given by our omnipresent producer. I feel like that should be Selwood's tagline as a neighborhood. They do put on their menu, like on the at that pub. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to say though, and I'm so sorry. I don't usually take a dump on people, but I didn't think their tachos were that good. Um, <gasps> the problem was that they need to pre fry the. The, you guys can have this information for free as okay. a food person. Please fry your tots first and then top them with the toppings. Don't put toppings on top of cold tots because the tots in the middle don't get warm. They're not crunchy. It becomes this like greasy pile of mashed, it's cold mashed potatoes with like cheese half melted on it. Please fix it. Who's frying with cheese on it? I don't get it. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, no, sense. no, no. So they're, I think that they're putting cold tots on a plate and then we're putting the toppings on oh. and shoving it under the salamander. Oh. Gotcha. Yeah, that's disgusting. We don't like that. Got to start with hot tots. Heather Arndt Anderson, you heard it here first. You got to start with hot tots. <laughs> uh, so this is a controversial question, and so I left it for last because I didn't want to sour the mood. Um, what is the correct dipping sauce for a tater tot, and why? Oh man. Okay. Um, I can make a logical claim that it's ketchup because actually Orida sold to Heinz. And so it's kind of like the stepmom and um, dad are having a good marriage and it really worked out. And we're not mad at the step siblings. The tots with ketchup is a good, but um, I really like ranch on a tot. If it's a Cajun spiced tot, especially if something mm-hmm. has a little zip to it, I like a cool, creamy dressing to quell the heat a little bit as long as there's a good balance of like acid i like a you know even like a sweet chili sauce on a on a tot's pretty good Ooh. yeah i think yeah ranch or ketchup i don't mess with i don't mess around too much i usually keep it pretty classic i'm glad that you like i'm glad that you said something other than ketchup because if you just ended this with like ketchup it would have been i mean there's no wrong answer but heather i feel like any take a person has about condiments is a hot take and yeah, it has so to true. be backed up and has to be backed up because no matter what someone's gonna be like you're wrong <laughs> whatever man there's room in this world for all condiments but like if somebody was gonna use like a honey dijon can we just tell them they're wrong uh, i don't actually i'm not mad at a honey dijon it's got the sweetness it's got the acidity from the vinegar so yeah no i i'll allow it okay cool well before we wrap it up is there anything else potato related that Oregon invented that we haven't discussed <laughs> that you're just going to throw at me at the very last moment? As soon as I say goodbye, you're like, oh, and, you know, whatever. I feel like I covered it. We really did kind of nail it, though, on the fried potato products. We mm-hmm. really did. We can go home proud of what we've done, knowing <laughs> that we really are the potato people. Idaho, you're good at growing them, but we are the real potato people. Yeah. You know, this was quite an arc because I came in 100% being like, who do we think we are? <laughs> who do who do we think we are? You know, just saying that, oh, yeah, we're the potato people. Uh, but now I'm just like, we are. We actually are because I feel like you might grow them, but we make them. You know what um, I mean? Like, yeah. We ma- yeah. Yeah. It's the you kill them, we, you, we grill them kind of situation here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A dead cow is not a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> Can I... Can I tell you real quick before we leave my favorite topping for a teeter tot? Mm-hmm. So I'm actually not a big fry person. So I need a lot of stuff. Like I I don't like fries alone, but if you give it, I me mean, chili chiefs fries, I'm like all over it, you know? And it's kind of similar with a teeter tot. Um, but I learned to eat it with um, like a little creme fraiche or sour cream or something and uh, caviar. Ooh. And it is so good. Like, I'm sense. just anyone out there, if you like caviar, um, I just like lost all my listeners. Like, they're just like, caviar, no. who is this lady talking? But it's really good because it's so salty and then you have a potato and then it's crunchy 
and then you have the creme fraiche or the sour cream, whatever you're using. It's just like, there's not much acid. That's the only thing that's missing, but I still think it's really good. Creme fraiche is pretty acidic. It's got that like lactic acid. Yeah. You know, I bet you could do a, like make it like a to- like a tostone kind of like flatten it and fry it. So then you can use it like a little bleen. Um, mm. And that would be pretty classy. Yeah. Sorry. I just... <laughs> <laughs> I just had to mention that before we left. Yeah, just a hot tip for you, Heather. Thank you. I appreciate that. I never would have thought to to do that with a tater top, but now now the, the sky's the limit, really. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, Heather, thank you so much for taking time to discuss the tater top with me. My pleasure. This was worth everyone's time. Oh, good. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> And now for your microdose of news. There were 80% fewer traffic stops in Portland last year than there had been a decade ago. In that same time frame, traffic fatalities have doubled. In response, earlier this year, Portland police reinstated their traffic enforcement division and a bill passed by the state legislature expanding existing prohibitions against driving under the influence. And a semiconductor company has announced plans to invest $1 billion in its Beaverton manufacturing facility. Analog Devices Incorporated, or ADI, says the investment will allow the company to expand its manufacturing space and open a training center. The expansion could add hundreds of local jobs. For even more local news and events, sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Portland. We'll throw a link in the show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Portland. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to support the show, share, review, and subscribe. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's. <laughs>